So guys, coming back here, the next thing that we need to talk about handling failures in event-driven architecture is the dead letter Q. Let me just show you what we have done in the previous video, okay? So we have here our application that is consuming an event, okay, from a Kafka topic, and we are simulating that we are consuming an external API that uh, sometimes give us timeout, sometimes give us uh, some other exceptions, okay? So we are retrying using the retry mechanism and the back off strategy, okay? This is stateful retry with back off strategy, but what happened when our back off is exhausted when we retry for example here three time and nothing happened so the system keeps throwing us an exception so in even driven architecture not only but we are talking in even even driven architecture what we can do with that okay so in that order let's suppose that here let me create a new event okay and our application is handling the the, the event the first time second time okay as we can see here so, oh, my bad, here I add the max interval, but uh, no problem. As we can see here, it's retrying using the stateful retry mechanism. And after the, the, the third attempt, it will throw us an exception. So what you say, you are, you are telling us that we are losing the event, what we can do? So this is where the concept of dead letter Q come into action, okay? So the concept of uh, dead letter queue is a message queue used to store okay, messages that could not be delivered to their intended rec uh, recipient, okay? You uh, do to some various uh, reasons, for example, uh, invalid format, timeout, or something like that, okay? So we, we are going to use, okay, that uh, message or that letter queue in order to, to, to save okay those messages that we could not process that we could not handle okay so we are talking about the consumer side so in order to deal with dead letter q using spring cloud stream the only thing that we need to do is enabling okay the dead letter q mechanism okay so how we can do that we can do it by providing for example for our particular consumer okay a dead letter q for example, here I just say consumer. My my bad because I need I need to specify first instead of being just Spring Cloud Stream. I need to specify that we are using Kafka, because some messaging broker okay they deal with the letter Q differently. So we are dealing we are using Kafka. So let me just put here, and then we can say like okay consumer that enable the letter Q will be true. So if we take a look here. Okay, you can read a little bit more about this, but this is what we need to do. Okay, so now let's take a look here in our AKHU. Okay, as we can see, okay, we have the customer, which is our customer microservice. It produces events into this topic. We have the decision microservice, the one that is consuming from this topic to another topic. Okay, and Okay, now let's, for example, here put some small configurations, okay, just like this, and multiplier can be 2, okay, and let's rerun our application, okay, it's giving us an exception because the dead letter Q is not supported by anonymous, okay, consumer group, what does it mean? We need to, uh, to say, okay, uh, we, we uh, are dealing okay with a consumer group so in that order let me just put here okay this is the consumer group kafka needs the consumer group in order to avoid uh, a two two different instances of the same application consuming the same uh, event okay so this is very nice to understand just try to understand what is the kafka consumer groups so let's restart our application okay now we are processing okay once twice third okay and yeah we don't have exception anymore. We are processing, processing. So what's happening here? If we take a look now, as we can see before we had only two topics, right? Now, if I refresh here, now we have here an, another topic, which is error that customer. So customer, okay, 
customer topic, error that customer topic, that decision microservice. So it's telling us that, okay, our microservice decision now has a dead letter queue, okay, topic or, or error topic, okay, that will deliver all the message that we have failure to, to, to consume, okay, into this another topic. So explaining you better, when we add this property, our application by default, every time when it cannot handle an, a message, okay, it will send this message into this topic. This topic is the dead letter Q, okay? So in Kafka, the letter Q is just another topic. So uh, this is what's happening here, right? And I think it, for, for myself, I think that this, this name, okay, is better. This is the best approach to, to have my dead letter Q. But sometimes our organization is so big and we need to, to, to give a specific name to our dedicated queue. So in order to do that, the only thing that you need to do is applying here, for example, uh, here, the dedicated queue name. So we can just, for example, say here, let's suppose the name of our microservice is decision. Okay, and let's say they dead letter Q. So if we start our, if we restart our application, and produce once again one more event okay it will start trying to it will retry 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 until the back office is exhausted and then if we go here we will see now that we have the decision delta letter q so this is how we can apply the concept of dead letter q using spring cloud stream right so why you need dedicated queue, okay? So when you put some messages, okay, into dedicated queue, later you can analyze the message. You can, uh, uh, for example, uh, try to troubleshoot the, the reason why you could not handle the message, okay? And sometimes, for example, if I'm just trying to put some message into dedicated queue, I want to connect, for example, for that queue, a elastic search or, 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 or something like that in order to, to get metrics, in order to understand what's happening, uh, the volume of my messaging uh, and so on. OK, so dedicated queue is very nice approach, OK, that we can use an even driven microservice in order to, for example, save okay, the messages that we could not process. So, guys, hope that you understand and try to read a little bit more about that letter Q. This is just an example using Spring Cloud Stream in Kafka. Another thing that I would like to tell you guys is when you are dealing with that letter Q using Spring Cloud Stream and Kafka, if you take a look here in our topic, let's suppose that we can check, for example, this event, okay, that we that we have here in our dead letter queue, okay. Uh, if we take a look here, let's just, for example, take a look here in the header. So in the header, we can see that uh, Spring Cloud Stream and Spring Kafka, out of the box, they give us some other information that can help us in order to, for example, figure it out the cause of this failure, right? So as we can see here, we have the uh, exception uh, stack trace, right? We have also, for example, here the exception message that it's something that we can customize, okay? So all this metadata that we have here in the header can help us in order to troubleshoot, in order to understand what really happening in our, let's suppose, in our application, right? So guys, the other thing that I would like to show you guys is the fact that we cannot retry every single exception. There are some exceptions that are retriable and there are some exceptions that we cannot retry. For example, as I was telling you guys in the previous video, for example, a bad request is not retriable, right? For example, let's suppose uh, that we have an exception like timeout. For example, we are invoking, okay? For example, here we are invoking uh, an external API and this external API give us timeout. Okay, in this case, I think we can retry, right? Retry after some some minutes, right? After some seconds, it's, it's okay, but we need to understand that we cannot just, for example, retry everything. So in that order, let me just, for example, create here an exception. Let's just call it by first, uh, let me just create here a package. Let's call it by exception. 
So in this package, I will create a class which will represent, for example, an retrieval exception. Okay, so an retrieval exception can be, for example, a database a connection timeout or an API timeout or something like that. Okay, so in that order, let me just, for example, for this particular case, create here, for example, retrieval exception. So as we are creating exception, of course, we need to extend the runtime exception. And we know that exception should be immutable. And for example, here, let me just, for example, give here a string. Okay, let's just call it by uh, reason. Okay, so here we are going to specify the reason of our exception. So. You can understand this class as bad request, connection timeout in, in not bad request, but for example, connection timeout in database or uh, while invoking an, an external API, for example, uh, unavailable service, right? So this is all this kind of exception that, kind, that, that falls in this kind of category. So here, for example, let's just give here in another case, for example, if the name starts with F, okay, because I, I, I don't really want to invoke an external API, but you can assume that we are dealing with this case, okay? This is just a demonstration. So I'm just going to give here, for example, an elf if statement, okay? And I will just say, okay, customer that get, customer that first name start with, let's suppose F, okay? So in this case, we are going to throw a new uh, retrieval Okay, exception. And let's pass here the reason. And this exception is retrieval. So what we are trying to tell you, you guys here, is just a simulation, okay, while invoking, okay, while invoking an external API. And yes, so now how we can customize, okay, our even driven microservice in order to retry only for a particular exception. So in order to do that, we can just go here, for example, in our application property. Let me just, for example, paste it here and say, okay, for this particular uh, consumer, I'm just going to retry, okay? Uh, first, it's not only for Kafka, we need to understand this, okay? But now I did say, okay, I need to retry only when, okay? So let me just, for example, go here in our exception. I'm just going to copy here the reference, okay? And I'm going to pass it here. And let me just put it as true, okay? So for this particular event handler, okay? I'm just going to, to, to say, okay, if is a retrieval exception, okay? So we, we will retry. But for example, if the exception is uh, another another kind of exception, which in our case is we, we are using here the, um, the legal state exception, okay? We are going to say, for example, false, okay? So if we run our application, and now let's go to our postman. So what we have here is the follow use case. If the, the, the customer uh, first name starts with N, we are going to throw an illegal state exception. So the illegal state exception is not retriable, okay? So we can assume, for example, illegal state exception or null pointer exception or bad request, okay? Uh, as non-retriable exception. So let's, for example, here, try, hit once, hit twice, it for time, okay? If we take a look here, okay? If we take a look here, we can see, okay? That we handle the, the, the request, okay? That we handle the event, okay? But we are not retrying, okay? So I can just, for example, go once again here. Let me just clean it in order to to be uh, visible. So if we run once, okay, we create a new customer, okay, and the application has thrown an exception, but as we can see, we are not retrying, okay? But now, if we hit this use case, okay, where we are 
throwing in um, retriable exception, we will see that, let's just put here, for example, F, okay, we will see that we are going to retry, okay, this exception, okay, as we can see, it's retrying, and then it will send the event into our dead letter Q, as we can see here. So, let's take a look here, yes, and it's here. So, guys, this is a very simple way uh, that we can use uh, Spring Cloud Stream, Kafka, and not just only Kafka, in order to, to specify some kind of, uh, in order to specify which exceptions we are allowing the retry mechanism, okay? So, for example, here in our use case, we say that, okay, we are not, okay, enabling the Java illegal state exception, okay, to be retry. But, in other hand, we have here the our custom exception, which is retriable exception. We are telling Spring Cloud Stream, okay, that, okay, for this particular exception, you can retry. So, this is very nice in order to maintain um, your application in a correct state, right? Because we, we don't want to retry, for example, uh, uh, null pointer exception or something like that, or bad request, because bad request will be always bad request. But in other hand, uh, connection timeout, an available exception, maybe can succeed. So the other thing that I want to tell you guys is that it's not the only way that you can implement uh, exception handling using the Spring Cloud Stream, okay? So we will see the other ways in future videos because I don't want to, to make this video so long, but this is the beginning, okay? As you can, as you remember in the in the previous video, we were talking about, for example, we can specify here, for example, um, uh, common error handle bin name because we can just uh, uh, configure a bin that will uh, handle the exception, okay? And also we can understand that, okay, if we send a message into the dreaded queue, if we want to, to commit on error, the offset or something like that, and so on guys so we will see it in next videos and hope that you enjoyed the video and see you in the next video